Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our Thursday devotional and prayer time. Last night, I had a, de a devotion, a, a talk on a group called the Proud Boys, and I became interested in the Proud Boys simply because of the debate that happened between President Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden uh, a week ago Tuesday. And that name came up, so I became interested in it, and I thought maybe you would be interested in in uh, in learning a little bit about this group as well, and they're 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 really a white supremacy group. The other group that I'm interested in, and I want to share with you tonight, is a group called Antifa. But before I begin talking about Antifa, I want to read a couple of scripture passages to you. The first is from Matthew chapter 26, and I'm reading verses 47 through. Oh, 52. Uh, Matthew chapter 26, verses 47 through 52. And this is the betrayal and arrest of Jesus. Listen, listen to the word of God according to Matthew. While he was still speaking, that was Jesus, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, the one I will kiss is the man, arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. And Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. And in a minute I'm going to get, tell you who that man was. But listen to what Jesus said to the man who cut off the, the, the slave's ear. Jesus said to him, Put your sword back in its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Now I'm going to jump up and I'm going to read from John's Gospel, chapter 18. And again, this is the same passage where Jesus is being arrested. And, and John's Gospel tells us who the man was who cut off the slave's ear. And I'm reading... Uh, I'm reading verse 10, chapter 18, verse 10. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, so it was Simon Peter who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave, and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, put your sword back in his sheath. I am not to drink the cup that the Father has given, it, given me. It's clear and evident that Jesus is someone who doesn't promote violence at all in any way. And I was thinking about our country, and I was thinking about how we have the freedom of, of speech, and we have also the freedom to congregate as well. So I, I start looking into this group Antifa. And Antifa is really a contraction of the phrase anti-fascist. And it refers to a decentralized network of far-left militants that oppose what they believe are fascist, racist, or other right-wing extremists. Well, some consider Antifa a subset of, uh, of, uh, of anarchists. Adherents frequently blend anarchists and communist views together. One of the most common symbols used by Antifa combines the red flag of the 1917 Russian Revolution and the black flag of the 19th century anarchists. Antifa's group frequently conduct counter-protests to disrupt far-right gatherings and rallies. They often recognize, they are often organized in, uh, in black blocks, ad hoc gatherings of individuals that wear black clothing, ski masks, scarves, sunglasses, and other materials to conceal their faces. They use improvised explosive devices and other homemade weapons and resort to vandalism. Antifa members organize their activities through social media, encrypted peer-to-peer -peer networks, and encrypted messaging services such as Signal. And like many of you, back in the summer in, in the state of Washington, in particular the city of Washington, there was a group of anarchists that took over six blocks of the, uh, the, the, the city of Seattle. And many... Many people say that they were uh, Antifa or there were some Antifa people who were part of that group. But it's clear that Antifa 
is affiliated with communism, and it's clear that Antifa wants to overthrow the United States of America. But as I was looking into this, I mean, this bothers me because I love the United States of America, and I love what our country stands for. And when I see this group of, in particular, young, young people who are trying to overthrow the United States of America, that bothers me. It really does. And I keep on going back to what Jesus said. You don't, you don't use violence to make a statement. It's okay to protest. It's okay to make statements. That's what we are called to do when we, do, when we are, when, when, when something's not wrong in our society, but to do it by violence, that's not Christian at all. So my, my thoughts and prayers tonight are, if we want to bring about change, you do it the right way. You do it through the court system and you do it through peaceful protests. Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. did that. He did peaceful protests and he was effective. You don't need violence. You don't need hatred. You don't need any of those things. And again, I, I am blessed that we live in the United States of America and I know you are too. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for our country and we thank you for the blessings that we have. And as we continue through the election of the President of the United States, be with us and guide us and help us to make the right decision when we are in that voting poll. That when we are there, uh, either, either absentee ballots or ballots at home, or that we're voting at the voting polls, we pray for wisdom and discernment. And we pray for our country. We pray for President Donald Trump. We pray, we pray for former Vice President Joe Biden and other men and women who are run, running for other offices in our country. Bless the whole election process. And again, we continue to pray for the COVID pandemic. We continue to pray for a speedy end to the pandemic. And we pray that our lives can get back to a normalcy that we once had. And I, and I truly believe that our lives will never be the same as it was before. It'll be different. But I, but I am certain that God can make it even better. Bless those who are shut-ins, bless those who are in hospitals, and bless those who are in nursing homes. And we pray for all of you out there as well today, that God would touch you and sustain you and bless you. And Father God, we pray for those individuals who are struggling, those who, are, who have a hatred, and those who want to pick up a, a sword or a gun and, and cause violence in our country. We pray for... We pray for peace and understanding, and we pray, dear God, that your blessings would rain through them and that they would be convicted that what they're doing is wrong. And help us and, and empower our leaders of our country to continue to make the United States the greatest country in the world. We ask all these blessings in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You want to make a difference in your life? Pick up this book and share the message of Jesus Christ. You're going to make a difference in your life, and you're going to make a difference in someone else's life. God bless you, and I'll see you all Sunday.